Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build this cardboard greatsword. Enjoy. So for this project, you're gonna need two fiberglass rods because they're way longer than a meter. You're gonna need some pieces of steel from an old yard sign I had, and of course some cardboard. First thing you're gonna wanna do is glue these two fiberglass rods together and also use a little bit of tape. Now that that is all glued together, I'm going to lay this down on my scrap piece of cardboard I saved. And I want the handle to be pretty long, so I'm gonna leave about that much room for the handle. Uh, the blade length is pretty much gonna be equal to the long sword, um, but this great sword can totally be the same length blade-wise, as long as the handle is pretty much longer. And also, we're gonna make the blade a lot thinner at the base too. So, I then drew out the shape of my blade and it's a lot thinner than my previous long swords, as you can see. Notice how I put this spike here. That is called the shield. It is for defensive purposes when you're using the sword besides the cross guard itself. And this is what the blade looks like when I cut it out. And I also cut out two. I highly recommend you go watch my proper cardboard long sword video because it teaches you a lot of important techniques I use on pretty much every cardboard sword I make. One of them being gouging out this big trench in the center of the sword so I can easily fit the uh, shaft right down the middle because it is a pretty thick piece of material. Next step is pretty simple. After you're gluing that shaft into the center of the sword, you're just gonna do the same thing to that blade and glue it down. So I have this piece of steel wire that I turned into the shape of a V. And I'm gonna put that at the top of the sword, extra protection to the tip. So I got one of the uh, pieces of steel, I bent it in half, and I added a little bend to both of them. And that's going to go right on this piece right here, just to add some extra strength. Oh, and don't forget to seal the edge of your sword with hot glue. Now for the handle, you're gonna wanna take a scrap piece of cardboard and glue it at the top, right about there. And then I also added this small little cardboard tube uh, just to add some more volume, I also filled that with hot glue. Okay, now this is where you're going to get your arm work out. Get the long piece of steel and bend it into this weird shape. You're going to have to tape together the edges so that it stays in that shape. But then that's going to be the cross guard. Something like this. And I'm going to fix it in place with some hot and Gorilla Glue. And... Um, I added another ring of cardboard just so it would stay in place better. Now, after a few minutes of bending and adjusting and everything, I'm going to add some more hot glue just to stabilize it. And then I'm going to Gorilla duct tape it in place. So I'm using Gorilla tape just because it's the best quality for this, but get a strip of duct tape and tear it into even thinner strips just like this. Then get all those strips and tightly wrap them around the cross guard. Now that that's nice and secure, um, I don't really do much with the cross guard, mostly because I'm lazy. So I usually just wrap it in Gorilla Tape. Just make sure you don't use the hammer sword move on anyone that you're fighting with. Uh, anyway, now for the handle. Notice how we have this cylindrical part, which has more volume than the rest of the handle. That is historically accurate. And it actually plays a real advantage when you're handling the sword, especially with this kind of size. So what I'm gonna do is wrap this in Gorilla Tape too and then we're gonna add a pommel on the end. Pommel is just two rings of cardboard glued tightly around the end of the sword. Now I got kind of carried away here with the tape, but the whole goal is to add as much thickness as possible, just you know, so it's not too thin. I also filled the pommel with a lot of hot glue and make sure you seal the edge with plenty of hot glue as well. Now I added some Gorilla Tape on the edges just to seal it one last time. And then we're gonna go paint this. And here's what it looks like next to one of my long swords. As you can see, the main difference here is actually the handle, because the blade length is actually pretty much the same. Also, I tried to include this detail right here, which is actually called the shilt. So now it is completely painted with a black hilt and cross guard and silver blade. Now I'm gonna add one more detail and that is this piece of steel that I bent into a ring hilt and that is typically found on great swords used for defense and a counterweight. 
But yeah, I'm gonna tape that on very tightly, the same way I taped on the cross guard. So here it is, tightened and fastened properly with a lot of Gorilla Tape. So here it is, fully completed, the Great Sword. And if I haven't made it clear already, great swords and long swords are absolutely my favorite. It's very hard to swing this thing around in my room, uh, but it is a behemoth of a weapon. Also, as you can see, I'm wearing my previous video build. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like these builds that I do, like and subscribe for more videos. Now I will walk into the frame with the sword. And here it is, the great sword.